Hey everyone, this is Mohit from Tenika Creations. Welcome to another tutorial in Fusion 9. If you end up liking this video, please do support the channel, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to set the time range to 60 frames. Then I'm going to click on this button to add a text plus node, drag it to the viewer, fit, select this. I'm going to rename the text plus node by pressing F2, call it L underscore minimal. Type in the text for the text plus node, that would be minimalistic. Change the font to unisans. Then go to the shading tab and change the color of the text like so. You can choose whichever color you like. Next I'm going to copy this node, Control C and paste it over here, Control V. Rename it as R underscore minimal. So this will represent the left side and this the right side of the text since we are going to divide the text in two. I'll select this text and add a rectangle mask to it. Go to the properties and change the x value of the center to 0.25. Select the second text and add a rectangle mask to it as well. Go to the properties and change the x value of the center to 0.75. Let's drag the left side of the text into the viewer 1 and the right side into viewer 2. This divide is the basis of our animation. So let's merge these two together to make it look like a single text. So connect the output of this to this. Drag the new merge to viewer 1. Let's work on the animation itself. So select L minimal and go to frame 0. And in properties window, go to the layout tab and right click at the center and go to modify with XY path. Then set the value of X to 0 0.7. Go to frame 40 and set the value of X back to 0 0.5. Select R minimal this time. At frame 40, go to layout. Right click on the center, modify with XY path. Then go to frame 0 and set the X value to 0 0.3. Now if we play, this is what we get. It's really boring, but we'll get there. Go to the spline editor. I just need the X of both. Click on select. Fit, click inside the graph editor, then press Ctrl A to select the keyframe. Press F to flat. Go to frame 20, which is right in the middle as the animation is from 0 to 40. So 0 to 19 is 20 frames and then 21 to 40 is 20 frames. Press K on the keyboard to add a keyframe at 20. We'll use the same method that I showed you in the previous video. Click on this handle and drag it to frame 22 there in line with this keyframe. Select this handle and adjust it so that it is in line with this keyframe. So the handles in this case is two frames from the middle keyframe because we have 40 frames this time. Let's check the animation. By the way, we have only corrected the right side. I think it can be further worked on. So I'm going to move the keyframe at 20 using the left arrow key till say 14. Yet again, I'm going to adjust the handles of the keyframe. Line it with this keyframe and adjust this handle too. Then I'm going to select this keyframe, press T on the keyboard to bring up the in and out values for the keyframe handles. Click on lock in and out and set the value to 70. Go to the flow. Let's play the animation. Yeah, that looks good. 
So let's do the same thing with L minimal. Select it and then go to the spline editor. Fit. Click inside the graph editor. Then press Ctrl A to select all the keyframes. Press F to flatten. Go to frame 20. Press K to add a keyframe. I'm going to move the keyframe to frame 14. So use the left arrow key to move the keyframe. Adjust the handles as earlier. Take this one, move it over there. And then this one. Line it with this keyframe. Let's also set the handle values for this keyframe to 70. Go to the flow and let's check the animation. I think that's looking good. Now we'll work on the next text item. So I'm simply going to copy these nodes, Control C and paste it here, Control V. Rename this text, call it L title. And this one will be R title. Let's also change the text to title. Select this, change it to title. And then select this and do the same. I'm also going to change it from heavy caps to thin caps. Select this and do the same. Let's look at it in the second viewer. Let's see, this is how it looks. Let's say in the color, so go to shading, make it white. Do the same thing for this. Go to shading, change the color to white. Let's merge it together. So they're on top of each other. So let's change their positions. Select this merge and then add a transform node. And then set the Y value to 0 0.55. Select this merge and add another transform node there. Let's set the Y value to 0 0.4. Then I'll increase the size like so. We'll round it up to 1.5. So let's have a look at the animation that we have. So that is looking nice, but let's actually make it little more interesting by offsetting the animation. Go to the spline editor, select all the parameters, Click inside the spline editor and press Ctrl A to select all the keyframes. Using the right arrow keys, let's offset the keyframes by 3 frames. Now let's have a look at the animation. Okay, let's add a black background behind the text. Add a background node. Merge this on top of the background. Let's check now. I just feel the texts are not at the center, so let's adjust it. Select this transform node and change the value to 0 0.575. Select this transform and change the Y value to 0 0.425. Next we'll add that square outline around the text and we'll be using the mask paint tool for it. So just for the reference of the square, I'm going to add a background node and then add a rectangle mask to it. Now add another background node and we'll use this one for the actual square outline. To the background node, let's add a mask paint tool. So press shift space bar and type in mask paint. Press OK. I'm going to merge this on top of the square reference and drag it to the viewer one. Let's zoom into the square so that we can draw precisely. Select the mask paint. Click on this button so that we can draw the busier curves. Move the cursor to viewer 1 and press F4 to expand the viewer to full screen. Adjust the view. 
Now remember that this black rectangle is a reference. So click at this corner, press shift, click and drag till the right corner. Hold shift again, click and drag downwards till so. Then shift, click and drag till there. We need to close the rectangle, so click on this button to close it. Right now the rectangle edges are smooth because we are using a soft brush. Let's change that. So click open this brush controls and click on this button. So you can see that now we have a sharp edge. I can also reduce the size of the brush like so. That's better. We no longer need the reference so let's delete these nodes. Then select the background node and change the color like so. Drag this down, this one here. Connect the output of this to this and then connect this to the foreground input of this merge. Let's have a look at it in the viewer. It's looking good. Let's adjust this slightly. Okay, the reason I chose the mask paint tool over a regular busier mask tool is that we can animate the in and out for a mask paint tool, which is what we are looking for. So let's go ahead and do that. So go to frame zero, go into the properties window and take this end to zero. Set a key for it by double clicking on this vertical rectangle. Then let's see, at frame 20, I'll set the end value to one. Go to the spline editor. We just need the end value. Click inside the graph editor, control A to select all the keyframes and press F to flat and fit. Then go to frame 10, press K to add a keyframe. Then using the left arrow key, I'll move the keyframe to frame six. Then adjust the handles like so. And this one also in line with the corresponding keyframe. Set the value of this keyframe handle to 70 and this one to 50. Go to the flow and let's have a look at the animation. Okay, it's fine, but I think I'll extend the animation till till 30 or so. Go to the spline editor, fit, press control A to select the keyframes. Then I'm going to click on this button, zoom out, hold shift and move this line till frame 30. Go to the flow and let's play a final animation. Yeah, that's exactly what we are looking for. Again, if you have any doubts about something that was shown in this video, drop in a comment and I'll get to it at the earliest. So that's it for this video guys. If you like this video, give it a huge thumbs up. And for more tutorials like these, hit that subscribe button if you're new here. In case you're already subscribed, hit that bell icon so that you get notified for every new upload on this channel at Tenika Creations. Share this video if you feel someone in your circles could benefit from this video. Thanks for watching. This is Mohit signing off and I'll see you in the next video. Have fun guys. Bye bye.